Formula One returns to Spain for round eight of the 2019 season for the Spanish Grand Prix. The returns to the track used all throughout winter testing. Also being the race that's also used for testing as is stated. It's also the race where most teams bring their first major upgrade packages of the season, although some teams hurried upgrades throughout earlier in the year. So their upgrades for this race won't be as big, but still his team has brought some kind of upgrades to this race, looking to move themselves up the pecking order, or at least bring themselves closer to the competitors around them. And it's already intensely fought championship already, with three teams going for the constructors of Williams, Toyota and Mercedes, and the five of best of the rest for P6 and the championship between every single one of the midfield teams. Red Bull come to this race with a new aero package and they look to uh, still regain the downforce that they've lost. They're one, Red Bull, one of the teams hit hard most by the new regulation changes for this season. They're still looking to find their way back to where they were aerodynamically in previous seasons of 2017 and 18. Haas finally also bring, managed to get on their car their first upgrade package of 2019 as the cars have often shown good pace throughout qualifying but often sank during the race in position wise as the team have really failed to understand the tyres of this car and how the car performs in race pace. Uh, but with the new upgrades brought to the cars, both drivers do look to be showing an increase in speed, with once both drivers firmly within the top 15 in both on long run pace for the first time since the first round and pre-season testing. Alfa Romeo come to this race with a small upgrade package, I they've brought a major one for the Ray Downforce back at Azerbaijan, so they have another barge board upgrade for this race. You have to see though if the upgrades prove enough to, for the aero deficient car on the Spain track. Williams come to this race also with a new lick of paint. It's coming off the back of an upgrade, an extension to the uh, the contract with title sponsored Rocket from what was three years to now five years, ensuring financial stability for the British outfit. Thorough mm. though had an interesting moment through the uh, ten the mid practice attempting to run into the gravel due to a suspension failure with the car, which you're running about one. Come back at track, you just clip one of the cars. Unfortunately, wasn't able to stop the car in time. Although he lost his front wing, the other car though was able to continue without damage and the other car was Max Stappen looking at it now. A little on board here from the Dutchman, he's just going to just avoid to take the rear wheel of the Red Bull car and somehow in some way didn't actually manage to take off the rear wheel of the car. So that wasn't the end of it though for Josh Gero. They're coming into third practice, who's on a hot lap here. He's also being held up by the house of Colin Hatch in front of him. Rain slide on the apex and forced Gero to take avoiding action, spin the car into the wall and use it another front wing where the Haas would have to pay for a new one to be built. Alex Albon couldn't make the most of Torres' little grades and he lines up last place on the grid. And a shocking lap from Vern sees him also on the back row with the tie driver. Given out, he was struggling in qualifying pretty much the first time this season, lining up only in 18th place. And an equally poor lap from Kobayashi sees him start from only P17 in the Toyota. Colin Herta would avoid issues in, in qualifying and would start from P16 alongside Lando Norris, who returns now for the remainder of the season until the final race. Armstrong would put the new Hassel Grace to good effect, start from 14th place, and Josh Cho starts from 13th as the lead Alfa Romeo, showing that the team are in for a difficult race possibly. A good lap from Nico Kari, considering where his teammate starting, starts from inside the point places from 12th, and he's joined on row 6 by Nico Hulkenberg in the lead of the Renaults. Lewis Hamilton can only manage P10 in the lead of the two Toyotas, a very disappointed lap from the 2008 champion. Also, George Russell, his fellow Brit, was also disappointed to only line up in 9th. Matthew Vettel starts from 8th place in the Ferrari. An OK lap from Robbie Kibitzer sees the pole start from 7th in the BMW Williams. An amazing lap though from Rio Harriento sees the McLaren driver finally look to get on top of the car and start from P6 alongside one of the young charges of Max Verstappen. Although his teammate though Pierre Gasly would get the better of the Dutch mini qualifying start from P4 alongside Charles Leclerc in the lead of the Ferraris. To leave the front row to be sided by two other championship contenders, Daniel Kvyat in second, but make sure I can make the most of the new Williams upgrades to take honours with pole position. Hey guys, Tara here. Welcome back to the Uni One career. This time, round eight, the Spanish Grand Prix, and a track which it's been, for, personally for me, it's been an okay-ish track. I've never had the the, uh, the world's most amazing pace around this track, but there's definitely a wide spot to be like hungry in that. Oh, there they go. George Russell starting down in P9. Definitely not in his usual place of P6. So a bit farther down the order with his teammate though on the front row. So there is definitely pace in that Mercedes car. And then onto the formation lap. Let's see if Evan actually gets away. You never know. Someone could always have a drama. It's, it's highly possible though. It's a bit difficult now to stall these cars since we can get them going on this, the battery power alone with the end stall anyway. Looks like though everyone's managed to get themselves away going. 
Now then, Mick Schumacher starting from pole position, a brilliant lap from the German in qualifying. And a clear look to have into the final moments when Schumi just banged in the lap out of absolutely nowhere, especially since his teammate Robert Kubitz is starting down in P7. Also, Ria Harianto starting in an excellent P6 position in that McLaren, beating out some of the uh, the more established teams in this season, the, one of the Williams and Kubitz, and even Lewis Hamilton in the Toyota, who been one of the form drivers in the past few races. Also, though, talking of the Toyotas, We've got here Camille Kobayashi down in 17th place. He's an absolute mare in qualifying and he's got a lot of work on his hands if he's to score points, or some good points anyway, from this race. And looking at us starting from P13, just side of the points places, but a stonking lap from Kari in that, in that Toro Rosso Honda. See there the thin start from P12 and the place where minimum I want to be coming the end of the race since this album's on the back row of the grid. And I don't know what Kari did, it's some, some madness to get that Toro that far up the grid. But once again, though, we've got Stroll right behind us, or near us, in front of us, somewhere, we're still near him. And then coming to the fire red light for the start of the Spanish Grand Prix. It's a long hold, the lights out now, and away we go. It looks like a preview side there from the front row, and actually, Mission Michael also maybe got a slightly better start there than Daniel Kvyat. We're going to go through three, four, five wide, possibly even back behind us now in the pack of cars. We've got one of the Hassan still right up behind the back of the Goji. Salvas has a good for a massive dive in the zone as well. And you've got one of the Yotaros in there, squeeze pass as well. And next time, they're getting very, very obviously from the back of the grid. We've got down to like, what, 15, 16 places? So a great start there from the tie driver now going side by side still with his fellow F2 driver from last season in Lando Norris. And that McLaren, of course, is back for what is only his, his second race in Formula One. He was having to share that seat with Matsushita from round two to the previous race at uh, Russia. And then we're down in P17, we've gone backwards, we've lost four places, but we've always gone back to ourselves. This card, it takes a few laps to get the title temperature, and of course having no temp in your rear tires, and that is not ideal. We go for a dive at the inside line though, of the, the Taurus, so still keeps ourselves we're going to force Alban out there, so getting very aggressive uh, with the uh, the tie driver. It's the first tie driver on the grid since 1955, so it's been a while, uh, looking further from there, we've got uh, the Haas here of Lance Roll, the guy we started just in front of, he's actually got a, a good view here of the battle in front, we've got Gio Vanazzi going side by side there with Cohen Herter, of course two drivers with something to prove, because Gio, since he's uh, got this, got the Alpha seat thanks to a Ferrari with his Ferrari backing, so Alpha get free Ferrari engines for the season, Nico Kari though, because we're ever in a Toro, so you've got to prove yourself every single race, especially with Max Verstappen and Pierre the two top drivers already filling the, uh, the top team. But Curry there with a good move, managed to get a pass or defend from uh, from our teammate. But in that situation, either way, they're going to side by side, and uh, Geo came out worst in that situation. Now they're going to be in search of course, no DRS here, that won't be activated until the third line of the race. We've got a bit of battling new going on behind behind those two, though. They come down now into town one, and you know, a bit, I think Stroll there had a little bit of a look, but just uh, couldn't do anything uh, anything with that. We're still right up behind the back of them, though. We've got a little bit of a gap, though, to the Taurus in front of us. We're still in P17, though, behind. Actually, Alex Albon's actually really passed us. That's something I hadn't actually clocked until now. That Alex Albon, somewhere in all of that mayhem, managed to actually re-overtake me. That's some pretty good straight-on speed, actually, from that Taurus I mean, with the lower drag cars, you think... Well, yeah, just with the lower drag cars, they are going to be naturally faster straight line. But with our, our cars being low drag as well, you think that would equal it out. But clearly not. Someone who's had also had an equally poor start to me. Honestly, I'd say worse overall considering the car that he's in is Kobayashi, who's still stuck right up our chuff here, down in P18. I mean, Hamilton, to be fair, only qualified in 10th place, so the Toyota still to be on a bit on the back foot. Though we've now got Sawasada with Kobayashi now, going down now into the start of the third centre. A bit of luck up there from Kobayashi, but just sweep there, around the outside line, goes very late on the brakes, honestly. There's no point in me fighting him. I mean, sure, yeah, we out-qualified him, but on race pace, on every on like lap after lap, there's no way we're faster than that Pink Panther car. I mean, I'd like to think that we are. Honestly, I'd like to be faster than that. Sorry, six since uh, then we'd be one of the other uh, top teams in Formula One as it stands. But that's not that's not how things are going to be in only the eighth race of the season. In what is honestly just a glorified Sauber car, because this is what Sauber would have had for this year if they continued in Formula One. So we've got Colin Hayley again in the decision with our BMW engine, and he's doing re doing, uh, doing wonders. Johnny Formula can pull his side with us now. Moving his side now down into tail one. We try and outbreak the American driver. He gets a bit, a bit of a lock there. He forces us out one. I'm still getting there right now. Side line. I can't see, but he, he, he took the apex. He's definitely uh, managed to clear us. And we're going. Just we're just going backwards in this race. Now the only person behind us now is Jean Eric Verne, someone who's doing equally as bad as what we are right now. He's, he's honestly, Vern is he's one of the few drivers who's just really struggled to get on top of these cars. Only P19. You've got two world champion drivers in the last two places in 2016 and Vern in 2017. And we're down here, we're filling row 10 of the cars. 
I mean, that just shows for nothing is predictable in Formula One. Two former world champions in cars which shouldn't be in the last two places are in the last two places. I mean, I know the race is going to be stronger for us being Geo qualified 18th, being 13th, so. And, and qualifying usually is Geo's strong point as well, but he's just going to get to grips with this car around this track either. I don't know, we are getting back now then on Colin Harrison, so maybe our tyres now finally starting to go up to We're trying to go full look around the outside line here. That's not going to work. I'm still trying these moves that I could get away with if I was in the Williams still from last year. I mean, it's the moves that I've come accustomed to, so it's the moves that I've got to try. As Lewis Hamilton puts up the fast slap of the Grand Prix, which. Uh, so maybe there's actually some pace in that later after all. It maybe just in qualifying, just didn't get the laps together in Q3. Now then, we've got the switching there on the back. Of Colin Hatton, we set our first lap of the race by half a second from our personal best. So, no side by side now with him. We pull out the now, going to no, try and go break him now down into the corner. He goes out and breaks, he's still going to keep his side by side. He's still almost like cutting there with his front wing. We just managed to squeeze out the American, repay the favour they did to us on the uh, on the previous lap. Yeah, I remember that. Um, I remember that, Harrison. I'm not going to forget it that easily. No, they're back up now into P18. So it's progress. I just wish we made progress because we're second quicker in the first sector alone. It just shows how bad traction we're getting out of the corners with uh, our stone cold tyres. I mean, we've got stone cold Steve Austin, but now we've got stone cold Steve Bradley tyres. Now, moving a bit further on there, looking towards yeah, the front button now, we've got, here we've got look, young Charlie Leclerc in that Ferrari. And coming out of the was actually coming in for a, a very early stop, I think. Is this early? I don't know. Because our strategy is a one stop from the mediums to the hards, as is everyone else is on the mediums as well. It's possible to do a one stop as well if you're on the um, if you're in the top ten. So you, you don't have to do a two stop in this race. I don't think so. Anymore. Although I mean, if you get to the hard tyres, you don't actually you could try and stretch it. But I think the two stop probably is the way to go since we've got drivers coming in already. We've got Charles Leclerc and Kubica. I think that is. Yeah, if I was the other time there, Robbie Kubica. And they're they're going to be no, they're stone dead last now. But they've got a world of clear air. In front of them, so they could be banging in some laps now. So they could be, will be in in contention. Uh, moving a bit further on, we got. I think everyone else made their, their first pit stops of the top teams. Now we've got Daniel Kvyat, who was actually the race leader. I'm pretty sure at least he was him or she be either way, since they started on the front row. And I don't think anything really changed up in front. And he's on the medium side now. So everyone's made a, a pit stop in the top. Who started in the top ten? So it looks like it is possibly. Probably actually going to be a two stop for everyone. So they've actually got to fight their way through the order. So now, whoever's whoever was in the eleventh before, whoever the lead midfield car is, is actually leading the race now on legitimate like legitimate pace. And it's all like yeah, it's all legit. And um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see that coming quite honestly. Now we've got just considering there we've got Stroll going about there. Well, one of the Tarossos. Um, where did this Tarosso come from? Is it Kari? Because Kari's in front. It must be Kari. I mean, it could be Albin, but I don't think it is. I think Albin's behind us. Or if I. I, I I lost track on it, so I don't know where the Tauruses are really. But now then we've got Daniel Kivet there all over the back of there with those fresh tyres. That good downforce as well on that Mercedes. We saw our side now with us now through Tannis Long, trying hard to run the outside line here of the Russian driver. So we keep our side, but then we just run out of road on the exit with our tyres going off now. But honestly, if I can frustrate the front runners, that's fine by me because I'm doing Geo a favour because Geo is still further up the road. The time now that I can cost the, uh, the big guys, the Mercedes, the Rebels, Mick Schumacher, and, and the Ferraris and that. That is time that I was will have saved for Gio later in the race. So it's going to take that's going to take him a little bit longer to catch up to him later in the race. So that's actually catching. You never know. G could uh, do a madness look with the trail speed of our car. We have a look on there though from the car in front, which is actually Kamui Kobayashi. So the first of the front running cars that Daniel Kobayashi is now going to have to deal with. It's probably the hardest overtake he's going to have to deal with all of these cars since it is the only front running car in this pack of cars. I've said Carl a lot of times in like the past three sentences. But either way, we've got still going right behind the top, right behind the rear wing there of the uh, the Japanese driver. You know, he's gonna have DRS here out the final corner. And then again, this whole train of cars is gonna have DRS off the back of each other. And I like to think that the Taurus, so the, uh, the the Toyota is, is faster than the Mercedes in a straight line. But now he's down the he's got the DRS, but as you can see there, he's not actually gaining anything. He's actually losing a little bit of ground. Then in front of him, you've got the Hass BMW, which is also a monster in a straight line. And then I'm moving a bit further on from that battle. We've now got one of the Tarossos here in front of us. And once again, I have no idea which of the Tarossos that actually is. So I'm just going to go with whichever one is. I'm just going to come to you as a Tarosso. And I, I actually still can't tell. But either way, we're all over the back of them. That's the main thing. Should I go around the outside line? No way, that's going to work. Surely not. We're just 
Yeah, the switchback line there does get cut off aggressively there, that Torreso. Whichever one is, he's getting very, very aggressive with us. Now we've got a BMW Williams going up the back of us now. Honestly, I do like the new colour scheme though. It looks a lot better than the uh, the toothpaste livery from what they had before. Now we've got the Williams on the back. We're going to try to go in the outside line here of that Torreso pitch. The A pace comes down, sweep it around the outside line. And that's the move I could have made in the Williams. Finally, yeah, these moves that I'm trying, they're actually working out pretty good. And is that Kari? I think I, I think I saw the uh, 26 on the side of that car. He's on the Taurus, so whichever one it is, they're doing us an absolute, absolute world of good right now because they're holding up this BMW Williams, which is a car we're fighting for position. We're fighting all of the top 10 starters for position because we've all got one more stop to make. So getting past this right now, this fight here, that is genuinely for position. So we've actually got a reason to fight all these front running cars for once. On the run now down into that one. Actually, that took Shumi a lot longer than I thought it would. I think with the straight line speed of that car, and having DRS. I don't know if the Taurus had DRS either though. That's, that still took a long time to clear. So as things stand, we're currently in P8. We're in a points paying position on a legitimate basis. And we've still got Shumi behind, coming up at a rate of knots now behind me. The uh, speed of that car. I mean, we're, we're on total up on medium size. He's probably on like three, maybe four laps at most old medium size. Now the thing is though, they can go to the set of mediums. The thing is, we have to, we have to go to a set of hard tyres. Unless I go to about lap 20 on lap 23, 24 even on these tyres and bolt on a set of softs. But these tyres can actually, there's no way we're going to repeat our tyre massaging of uh, what we did in Baku to somehow get those tyres past half our system to go on sets set towards the end. And here comes Jimmy though, on the inside line, going to try and outbreak the uh, the German though, but into the corner, going to let him through there, but still going to try to run the line. I'm not giving up easy though, showing him that I'm not just going to lie down and let him through. He might be in the car that I could have had if I stayed at Williams, but. Uh, I'm still sticking by my well, last about I mean, I moved team anyway, but I still think it was the right decision for uh, what I want to do with my career. Either way, though, down now, it's an we're still in the points, and we're ahead of Albon, so Albon was that Taurus that we were dealing with, so yeah, definitely wasn't Curry after all. Either way, I can't really, can't really tell from the helmets anymore, I mean, unless, they're two, unless they're two distinctly different helmets, which Kari's and um, Albon's aren't really all too different, honestly. And on the run down inside one, we've still got the DOS off the back of the left, but it's shame that he's absolutely gone at this point, yeah. There's, there's absolutely no, there's nothing really that we can actually do against the back here of that car. And well, we can try sticking his slow stream and try and save a bit of ERS in that, which we are doing. You can see, even now with the slow stream in that, we're still just losing time. And I was three times down in the first sector, and I've done absolutely nothing compared to my different times of normal. Now then, on to lap 14. We got to nearly half race distance. I'm still in P9. Shiri's absolutely disappeared. As you can, well, you can just about see him there coming to the corner. But uh, yeah, we've got a bit of a gap to Alvin, so we're in a little bit of a no man's land, honestly, at the at the moment. And now then, we're going to come down then into the pits for our one and only pit stop now then in this Grand Prix. It's going to be into a set of the hard tyres to take us to the end of the race. And the hard tyres, they feel they're okay. They're not the they're not as disgusting as they felt at other tracks. They're still, I mean, they could be a different compound. Because though the the tyre names on the actual the three tyres are the same, there's a range of compounds they, they could be. So these could be harder or, or they could be uh, yeah harder or softer than what we've had previously. I mean, there's a few questions, we're still in, in touch with the car in front of us at least. So the has there of um, Flying Stroll and Kobayashi in that tyre as well. So our pace hasn't been too bad. It's not been electric. But uh, it's even with Patreon, and with the upgrades that everyone's brought, this is what you think I've been. Oh no. I'm down in P19 again. I'm back where I was on lap 2. But I think everyone else has got to. Every other of the midfield cars has actually got to yet stop. Because. Although, actually, no, Gio was the lead driver, so he could have already stopped, actually. But now they're looking on now to our teammate Giovinazzi. Who's that? Okay, good, good. He's coming to the pits now. I thought for a second then that, wait, I was the second driver this time. I thought Gio and that had already pitted and I was actually genuinely second to last place along with uh, Vern in P20. P20 for the 2017 Drivers World Champion. That is shocking, honestly. If that was the case, well, it is shocking because you would me and him are both on the order. Our car is just really not working around this track. The Renault really lacking downforce, along with our Alfa Romeo car. But the thing about our Alfa is we've got the straight line to uh, kind of uh, kind of make it up a little bit. But out there now, onto the track. Gio in an absolute world of his own. Got no one to challenge him really. He's got quite the gap over the Torosso of this has to be Kari, surely. We've already passed Albon enough times in this race, so yeah, that has to be Kari. 
with uh, the uh, Hassa right up, his, right up behind the back of him there now. And good actually, first out is Stroll to make a good move here to the inside line. We start with Sysil with the Canadian and the Finnish driver. And Stroll, we've really not seen actually any of him this year. The Haas car, like we said, they've, they've really struggled in race pace. The qualifying, they've actually they've been all right. They've been about where you think they'd be. And uh, they've only got one points finish to their name so far at Bahrain with Colin Herta getting a seventh or eighth place at, at um, yeah, Bahrain. Yeah, now moving a bit further on now, looking on to us now, we're catching up now to the Torosa here. Omnika Kosa, Kari started well, but the pace of that Torosa just isn't there. He's starting to drop quite a bit now, like a stone, honestly. Well, you think that Kobe actually get past him anyway, so he's in the Toyota car, which is the uh, second or third best car in the grid at the moment. Then the, uh, the title fight, that's all they need to uh, that's all we need to know about them. Then a good one here on the Toyota Can Pause. Side by side now with our fellow Italian Alpha, one of the. Uh, we're two, two of the three Italian teams on the grid. Now we're going to make away on the inside line there, half Nico, half Nico Kari. Nothing there really that he could actually do to fight, so. Despite our horrific qualifying, despite Kari actually out qualifying us as well, I say horrific, it's about. We're on pace of where we should be, but. I'd like to have these started from inside the uh, the, uh, the top 12. But now, until lap 20, and I'm I'm understeering into oblivion, I think I may have found Jerez. I went that far off wide. Maybe, maybe Valencia, I don't know which way these, those tracks are from that direction. But yeah, P13, I'm legitimately not actually in the points places. I need to get past Stroll. But the problem is, right now, I might have Charles Leclerc right behind me. And behind him is one of the Williams of Robbie Kibetsa, the two that start really early. They're going to put me into 15th place. I've got no hope in hell at the minute of scoring points in this race because Stroll is like three or four seconds up the road. The Leclerc is going to come shooting past me like right now. Look at that straight line speed, that is just amazing for that speed. I mean, we've both got the same engine in our cars, but Ferrari being the works team, of course they're going to be able to optimise their engine better than what Alfa Romeo are, since we're a customer team, we just get the engines and we have to do the best, um, have to do the best with them that we can, obviously, that is, that's the engine deal that we've got, but, I mean, we got them for free, we can't exactly complain about that, we save like 30, 40 million on just having Jeevan at sea in the other car. Either way, we've got our former teammate now, Robbie Kiesa, right behind us, I say right behind us, he's right alongside us right now, and he's already passed us right now, that is depressing. That just shows the gap with, between the cars and that. Now we've actually wait. Why have oh, course, other people have already got to pay their second stops again? I wasn't going to pick up. I'm into the points places. I completely forgot everyone else had to stop because I thought they'd already did since Leclerc and Kubica are passing us now. And they were the first to blink. So I thought they'd already made their second stops. They would made their stop before everyone else. So I thought everyone else had already done their stops as well. And then P12, come on. One solitary point is on the table. Although, how, for how much longer they could hang on to their getting in the station now with the DRS as well. The back is going to put the outside line now. In that McLaren, our bitter rival in Formula Honestly, he is our rival. And as you go, oh my god, the Ferrari just sweet round us as well. We've been absolutely done. I have just had my trousers pulled down by the Indonesian and by Sebastian Vettel as well. That is honestly shocking. Our car is one of the fastest things. And it's also now in, in Germany, went that far wide. Actually, no, Germany is the other way. I think. Either way though, we're somewhere where we shouldn't be, and down now into P14. This car has absolutely no pace in a straight line. And look how much time we're losing. I am not this slow. And you saw a McLaren with a Renault engine shoot straight past me. We are faster than the thing's Renault power. Oh, hi Hamilton. No, now she doesn't make a move. You thought about it, we are so slow right now. You know what? I think the Ferrari issues are plaguing us. I think the Ferrari engine issues have just plagued us and of course the work team as well. Basically every race at some point, I think it's now finally in my turn. It's been eight races and now here comes Lewis Hamilton now to a blush right past me, which he does. We try out breaking early, but there's nothing I can do to the corner. There's no point, honestly. He's going to just get past down the straight now. It's down with Kavir, because of the fast lap at the Grand Prix. Who I think is the race leader still. So yeah, down with Kavir. Kavir actually on for his first, uh, first Mercedes victory. Mercedes, they go well here at uh, Spain. They, that's just something that, they, that seems to uh, happen quite often. So they're trying, I mean, they do a lot of latter, so they get a lot of running. I'm talking of running, I'm just running all over the place now. Look at my time I've lost to Hamilton. There's something seriously wrong there right now with that car. Here comes Alex Albert now, in his side by side. And how is he going to do that? Oh, mate, look at that. That is so easy. I'm going to try and force him over to just try and do something. Well, he cleared me so easy. Remember early on, the BMW Williams couldn't clear that torso to like the end of the straight. I think straight line speed wise, we're somewhere around the top pace of straight line speed. And you saw how easily we got done. Something is definitely wrong with our car right now. I swear the ERS is doing literally nothing right now. I mean, at, at this point, I think it's just best to save the engine, really, since actually, for once, that's the one thing that's actually worked this weekend. 
and uh, good luck Gio trying on, trying on to those uh, point places. Okay, understood. Box us that. We're going to a tight look at her. Well, so our team agree with us. Something is actually wrong with the car. I mean, that's pretty evident to see. But how much time we're losing. So on to the end of that lap. <sighs> Into the pits it is. That's that's it. That's game over. And for the first time now, I'm not going to score any points in the Alfa Romeo. I mean, honestly, seven races in a row. That's a really good streak considering the car that we're in, which wasn't... Actually, it was a good car last year. Sauber had, they had a really good final season under the Sauber name anyways. It's still a yeah, Sauber car. But the Ferrari issues, it was our turn eventually. I mean, they've played the works Ferrari team every single race at some point. I mean, Vettel's had the worst of it. They, they uh, forced our teammate Gio to retire at Japan, and uh, it was my turn eventually. And, uh, yeah, my turn is now. So, I uh, well, the race is still going on, of course, but I'm just going to have to watch the rest of it then on the on the TV screen there on the left. So, uh, like I said on the radio, good luck, Gio, and try and get some points to keep the Alfa Romeo team as a whole point-scoring streak going. So, back onto the live action. Looking here at the Red Bull, then, if Pierre Gasly who's got the house of long stroll there right in front of him along them course. There's our teammate, oh, come on Giovinazzi, you, you, you are literally, you've got the Giovinazzi train. You know truly would be proud of the train of cars you've got behind you right now, especially since, well, there's a Rebel, there's a Ferrari, there's two Ferraris actually. There's uh, the Williams and a Robbie Kubica involved as well, there's Harry Anto in there, there's Hamilton there, usually all the big names are literally stuck right behind them, um, behind our teammate Gio right now. And I think but Pierre Cazzo is looking very, very interested behind the back here of the house of Flash Stroll. I'm sure he's going to get, try and get, get past that white car. She can pull Sauber somehow. Use that good Honda Grunt. Well, I say good. It's an improvement, but no, no, no it's not actually. No, he's not an improvement. You have to pull back behind. He hasn't got the trailer speed to make the move there on the house. Once again, he's going to try and pull that out into the corner. And try and break late, but you see, he hasn't got it. That Rebel Honda does not have the straight line speed to get past a BMW powered Haas and the uh, f the working Ferrari powered car of G. Vanazzi. But, uh, yeah, so Honda, they've, been, they've definitely been improved. If you think back to where they were in 2018, back in the Toros, Toros I mean, the Toros car as a whole was pretty naff as well, but, um, yeah, they're still, this is this is the year of improvement for Toros, so for Toros, so for Honda as a whole. And you've got Stroll going very, very defensive into the car. I mean, I mean that's what he has to do, really. But this fighting, though, that is allowing Gio to pull a little bit of a gap. And a little bit of a gap is exactly what he needs right now. Uh, once again, Gazi got switching now. Both again, Stroll just has switch him as well. And DRS, both of them. Once again, he's going to try and squeeze him. But, G but Gazi's there. He can try and hold it there. Right there. Outside line, he's a good, oh, improved Red Bull Aero. So it's, it's better than the, what the Hatter got there. Sweep around the outside line. Just has the inside. And Stroll has to back out that move. And a nice move there from Pierre Gasly. Took him about a lap longer than the way you probably wanted it to, but he got it moved either way. Right then, moving further on from that, looking further up front now, we've got the other Rebel here of Max Verstappen coming up behind the back then of one of the McLarens of Lando Norris, who we, we haven't seen much of in this race. They're going to try and go around the outside line there of a fellow, but actually he's going to try and now break in a side by side still. Norris not backing down out of the fight. And then three turn two. Turn three, he's looking at his side, sweeping turn four now, so he's close, almost got nothing. All that here, we're kind of there with the wheel and the side pod of the McLaren. But Norris there putting up a massive fight here to the Dutchman here of Max Verstappen. So we're going to try and go around the outside line now into the next corner. Still keeping his side by side, two of them still side by side. Norris, you absolutely, Norris, you deserve a medal for effort. Still keeping his side by side, they're not going to have to there around the outside line though. Another thing that Verstappen's going to disappear now to try and chase after the car in front of him, which I think is one of the Renaults. So it's either Verne getting lapped, which with the lack of pace he's had in this race could be possible, but most likely it is Hulkenberg in the, uh, the lead of the two Renaults. Now we've got Norris here with the DRS on the back. Oh, that actually getting off that of and actually feels the need to go defensive. He's feeling the presence here, feeling the pressure from the um, from the McLaren Junior. I say Junior, the McLaren driver now. He's still a junior driver in a way, since it's his, it's his second race in Formula 1. He also finished runner-up to a current Mercedes driver, George Russell, in the F2 Championship last year. And Alex Albon finished third, or do you finish second then Norris third? No, I think it was Norris third, Norris second, and then Albon third. And he is the runner of Hulkenberg there in front of these two. But now then, we've actually got DRS here for the McLaren. He's actually getting a, a rate of nonsense on the back of Verstappen. He can pull to the inside line. And Verstappen actually had no idea that was going to be so he moved, but he moved way too late. And Norris is actually going to outbreak Max Verstappen. He's taking him inside by side. He's not getting his form without fight. Lando Norris v Max Verstappen, the, the, uh, the new fight in Formula 1. That is, I mean, that is a fight I'd love to see in, in real life as well. 
But uh, yes, it's a great fight these two have now. Once again, Norris goes defensive and is going to try and stick around the outside line, but he just hasn't got the, the downforce available there to him to do that. But honestly, brilliant driving there from, well, from both of them, yeah. But Lando Norris is making his name for himself now. I mean, he had a pretty poor qualifying compared to his teammate, but the, as, as the strategy is gone, Norris is the one now with uh, the, the better position. Also the one right now with the TV time to, uh, to prove himself as well. I mean... It, it doesn't matter weight, well it doesn't matter weight finishing the race, but if you can see some good great race craft like this as well, that just improves or could make things worse, you never know what's going to happen here. That's how unpredictable Formula 1 is. But there's yeah, actually some pretty good pretty good shot on speed in that runner powered McLaren. McLaren, they've come on leaps and bounds from where they were last year. I mean they scored what, 6 points last year? They're on about 20 something now I think, coming into this race, or maybe even more than around 30, so either way, they've massively improved and, and getting a top series qualifying for Harry Hunt as well is definitely uh, showing signs of improvement there for the, uh, the British outfit. But Matt Stappen there with the DRS once again, he's going to try and make a move on Lando, so he's going to make a move stick if he tries to make one, and Sauber's side still with uh, the the, uh, the brake now, and he's going to breathe something there, I imagine he turned the Honda engine up there quite a bit to make that move stick, because Norris, he should not be coming back in my car, but he's giving it everything now. Moving further on, this time though, things have actually made sense, and Verstappen's actually managed to drop the McLaren off Lando Norris, and that is all over the back then of the, the Renault of Hulkenberg, and this could get pretty personal between the Renault and Rebel, given how their toxic relationship ended in 20, well, the end of 2016 into 2017. And what's happened is they can try and drive around the outside line there of the Renault, which then turns to the outside once again, but then to the inside, they can make the move that Gazi did on Stroll earlier in the race. And nice move there from, from Stafford. I always think that battle with, with Norris, I think he just woke him up. Because that is a move that you expect to see from Verstappen. You don't expect him to see Steve Stafford being really overtaken by a McLaren, of all things, which is actually pretty decent, decent in the train speed. We've seen that the Renault's, uh, the Renault engine itself as a whole is, is pretty good. It's better than it was last year. But Norris now makes the move on Hulkenberg. Actually going to go three wide, possibly. No, Norris is diving all over the place and this happened. Very, very cheeky there. Goes to great there for, uh, defensively from Hulkenberg. Actually gets uh, gets compromised. And all of all that, Norris now managed to uh, overtake the German. So uh, two places lost for Hulkenberg in one lap. So... No, that's not good. So maybe Hulk's tyres have completely just gone off the cliff now at this point. Maybe he's definitely feeling the tyre wear. Since, well, he's been in front of Norris all race and it's all like now. But I mean, further on, Norris, the absolute mad lad, has re overtaken Max Verstappen. Unfortunately, we've missed that, but now Max Verstappen, once again, right up behind the back here of Lando Norris. This is Verstappen v Norris, the uh, new outright family. We've got Hamilton versus Schumacher and Kvyat. But now then, we've got Lando Norris versus Max Verstappen. Two completely different drivers, honest, obviously, since they're different people, but two different driving styles, it seems, as well. I mean, Norris, he still really, really don't know his style, yeah, honestly, yeah, that, that might be his advantage, because Verstappen doesn't really know how to race Lando Norris here, doesn't know what his style is, and Verstappen is very unorthodox in his overtakes, he's, he's proved that already, so anyway, he's an overtaking opportunity for Max Verstappen if he's got the car underneath him to do it. But he doesn't need the car to do anything to do it. He's going to have the straight line speed and the DRS. And, well, you think the straight line speed if he turns the engine up once again. And then he's in the DRS there on the back. And, oh, no, he's not. So he's gone back. So he's smoking from the back of the Red Bull. There's nothing that's going slowly. And now then he's holding him. And Verstappen, he's out of the race. He's putting off the side of the track. That, that battle there, the uh, the high speed has proved too much there for the, uh, it seems, for the um, the Honda engine. But now then, on to the, uh, the last lap now of the Grand Prix. This is now for Daniel Kvyat, he's leading the Grand Prix, and actually leading it quite convincingly, I do have to say. Because, well, considering the fact that I can't even see he's in second place. I feel like it's probably Shumi, but I don't know, I can't see them. But Daniel Kvyat though, he's in the final sector now. Well, we've seen last lap, engine failures him, and was it Mika Hakkinen in 2001 from the lead of the race with a Mercedes engine in the back of that McLaren, but now then, coming up now though, to the finish line, and it's going to be Daniel Kvyat now who wins! The uh, Spanish Grand Prix to take his first ever victory with Mercedes. Yes! Bravissimo, bravissimo, bravo, bravo, bravo. You can see there what it means to him. That could be there, really excited with the win. But now looking at our teammate Giovanni, he's now got Howard to try to go around the outside line of him. Mr. Salvasano, come on, Gio, put your foot down, come on, keep it in front there of Lewis Hamilton. But no, how did he go around the outside line? He's like, come on, Gio, keep around the outside line. No, he just can't do that. I mean, wishful thinking, honestly. But on the final lap, he's been done there by Hamilton. Wait, Gio's going really slowly. He's lost so much time. He's going super defensive as well. Don't tell me he's got the same issue as what I had. Come on, Gio, you've got one corner to go. You can make it. Well, this, you've got a few more corners to go. But then Hamilton, look at that, he's streaking away. Giovanni, there's something wrong with this guy. That is, that is so slow from Giovanni. No way he's that slow. 
Now coming out to the line. Now coming to get done here by the Williams. Going to the line. Going onto the line. I think Gio's just going to hold it on the line there. But yeah, hopefully, wait. We use the first line, don't we? The first line actually counts. Yeah, so Gio. Oh, that was so close. But Gio just holds on to that place. And I'm sure that's the points place. So Gio, I think, has finally, finally got some points on the board. And that is a hard race for Giovinazzi. But whatever issues he had, definitely seem to be affecting him there at the end. And actually hold off the throw of Sebastian Vettel. That's a good race from Giovinazzi. But Toto will finally get to celebrate a victory. And you can, yeah, he's been on the podium every single race that he's finished since he's a DNF at Azerbaijan. And I don't think there, the uh, deserving, very, very deserving race winner there. And Mercedes, once again, they just pull it out of the bags here. At the, uh, the Spanish... Uh, that the uh, circuit here in Barcelona, and uh, Harry Anto, where did he finish? 13th, no points for Harry Anto after his 6th place qualifying, that's not too good for him. Taking a look now at the end results, and Danny Kvyat takes the victory and the fastest lap. Nine, just over 9 seconds clear of Mick Shumi, and Lando Norris in his second race in Formula 1 has got the podium. Absolute madness there from the Brit. And that was the podium that he denied Nico Hulkenberg. And Kobe actually with a good result, because he race started in P5 ahead of Gasly. Destroy in 7th, Charles Leclerc down in P8, and Lewis Hamilton in 9th with Giovinazzi 10th place, 3 points in the bag. Ahead then of Robbie Kvitsa, just what was that? Was that 3 hundredths of a second that he beat him by, with Sebastian Vettel taking only 1 point from this race, coming home in then P12. As you saw, Harry Anto finishes in 13th place, with Alex Albon in 14th and Carlton Herter in P15. Nico Kari finishes in 16th place with jean ric Verne, last place of the finishes, with Verstappen, myself, and actually Russell retiring. Actually, I didn't clock that Russell wasn't there, so he must have retired really early on since we retired about, what, the midpoint of the Grand Prix? So, yeah, not a good race for us three. Moving on now to the point standings. And Mick Schumacher increases his championship lead now to 20 points. He's now a race win clear of Lewis Hamilton. Dana Kvyat in P3, 33 points off of the lead. And he's got quite the gap to Charles Leclerc in fourth, almost 30 points on the Monaco driver. And George Russell, despite his no score, stays in fifth place. He's now only two points clear now than of Robert Kubica and Kamui Kobayashi. Stappen, also with his DNF, stays where he is in eighth place. And with our DNF, we stay where we are as well in ninth. With Pierre Gasly in 10th in place, when Hulkenberg with a good result gets up into 11th place, demoting fellow German Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari down to 12th. Lando Norris is on 17 points after two races that he's actually competed in, so great start to the, the uh, I say season, the great start to his career so far. Ahead then of Jean Eric Verne on 11 points, also ahead of Matsuji Dos on 11. Arianto. What could have been for for him, but uh, no points is what he got. In, in, he's in sixth place on eight, two points clear of Carlton Herter. And Lance Stroll, I guess actually up now into eighth place, joint with his teammate, because they both got the same amount of points from finishing where they did. But uh, I think yeah, Carlton Herter has a better position, so that's why he's in 17th. That drops Nico Kari, he's also on six points, down into 19th place. And Giovinazzi with three points gets off the bottom now, leaving Alex Albin. At the bottom in 21st, but all the drivers have now scored points already, actually. And he yeah, races in, so it shows how competitive the entire grid is, really. Now, then, on to the constructor standings, and Williams still lead with 20 points clear then of Toyota in second, and then 31 points clear of Mercedes here in third. Ferrari in a bit of a no man's land, really, in fourth, and then 19 points clear of Red Bull here in P5, and Alfa Romeo. Crucially, thanks to Giovinazzi's points, hold on to P6 ahead of McLaren. And McLaren only one point clear than the front, so the 5 for 6 is really is heating up now. And Haas gets themselves off the bottom now into ninth place, thanks to uh, Stroll's points. They're on 12, leaving Torosso bottom of the table on 7. Going to a vote for your driver of the day with the polling that'll be in the video description. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you're new, and hit that notification bell so if you on any future videos. And you can be following Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. They'll be linked in the description down below. Also, uh, check out the wick here for the championship as well. That'll be linked down in the description below. So, this is the, for this season, past seasons, all the teams, all the drivers to have ever competed. So, if you want to have a look back at uh, what's happened in the past and uh, keep updated with the season as well, so you can check that out. 
I also, if you've got this game on PC, you can also download from the description of up in there as well the uh, modded liveries that I use. That'll be uh, the Blue uh, Williams Rocket livery, the uh, BWT livery on the Toyota, which will be the uh, actually is, is the racing point. And then you've got the um, the S2V Esports livery on my Alpha, and the White Bikes Hass livery. That'll be down in the description below. If you go to game on PC, you want to get them and download them yourself. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.